Item number, SCP-340. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-340-1, 3, 4, and 5 are to be communally housed in a 10 meter by 10 meter by 2.5 meter tank with the water temperature maintained between 25 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. Antidepressants and broad-spectrum antibiotics are to be administered intravenously every 12 hours. Medicinal compounds may not be added to the standard nutritive paste without approval. All waste products must be properly sterilized. Any personnel who aspirate water from the containment tank must report to medical staff immediately. Description SCP-340 is produced by a human-specific virus, which preferentially colonizes the nasal cavities. The virus cannot be identified according to the Baltimore classification scheme, leading Foundation researchers to believe it was engineered by parties as yet unidentified. The presence of genes from both HIV and the SARS coronavirus supports this hypothesis. An incubation period, with a mean duration of three days, occurs upon initial exposure to the virus. Influenza-like symptoms will then develop, and will persist for a mean of seven days before clearing up. An increased production of mucus has been observed in all known cases, and will persist after other symptoms have ceased. Virulence is highest during the first five days of infection, but viral particles have been detected up to a month after exposure in Foundation trials. Any time after infection, a high blood concentration of carbon dioxide will trigger production of SCP-340. When initially produced, SCP-340 is a jelly-like mucus, which extrudes to cover the lower half of the face, including the nose and mouth. SCP-340 in mucus form will undergo a catalytic reaction when immersed in water, and will set into a bioplastic membrane. The chemical composition of the bioplastic facilitates the data expunged process. Although it causes SCP-340 to degrade, the process allows the host to breathe underwater. The membrane is flexible and does not inhibit the host's facial movement. Any tears or holes which develop due to mechanical stress or SCP-340 degradation will be regenerated within 30 seconds due to constant production of SCP-340. Virulence is drastically reduced in this stage, but viral particles have been detected in water samples contaminated with SCP-340. Environmental contact may still spread the infection. When SCP-340 is exposed to air, it dries into a chitinous substance, similar to crustacean shells. The water vapor trapped inside an SCP-340 sealed respiratory system is sufficient to prevent premature hardening. The hardening process also destroys its ability to data expunged, and loss of function is irreversible after approximately two minutes exposure to air. Once fully hardened, SCP-340 is impossible to remove without inflicting major tissue damage. It is harder than any generally known organic substance. A standard tungsten carbide drill bit required more than 15 minutes of constant use to drill a hole through 5 millimeters of dried SCP-340. Research is ongoing into methods for the in vitro culture and harvest of SCP-340 for use in industrial applications. Addendum 341 Circumstances of Retrieval On date undisclosed, 12 students at a boarding school in United States began to produce SCP-340 during a swimming competition. Nine died before a Foundation containment team could be dispatched to the site. Five suffocated when attempts to clear airways of hardened SCP-340 failed. Two suffocated after attempts to open alternate airways induced hardening of air-exposed SCP-340 in the trachea, and two died from dehydration. Upon arrival, the Foundation containment team quarantined the school until the infection spread could be determined. Four additional cases were discovered who were not yet producing SCP-340. All seven were taken into Foundation custody. The team then distributed Class A amnestics and followed cover-up procedure Gimmel-2, the tragic fire scenario. Addendum 342 SCP-340 doesn't kill the host's oral bacteria, and the antibiotics can't stave off infection forever. 
Surgical removal of the host's teeth will be safer in the long run than trying to deal with abscesses, bone infection, and sepsis. Do we have a laparoscopic surgeon on staff? Dr. Cairns. Document 341. Inventory. SCP-341-7. through SCP-341. Caucasian male. Age at retrieval. 12. SCP-340 production at retrieval. Positive. Notes. Housed at site... SCP-342. African American male. Age at retrieval. 12. SCP-340 production at retrieval. Positive. Notes. Deceased. Complications from surgical insertion of feeding tube. SCP-343. Caucasian male. Agent retrieval. 11. SCP-340 production at retrieval. Positive. Notes. Housed at site... SCP-344. Hispanic male. Agent retrieval. 12. SCP-340 production at retrieval. Negative. Notes. Underwent experimental treatment. Treatment failed. SCP-340 production induced. Housed at site... SCP-345. Caucasian male. Age at retrieval. 27. SCP-340 production at retrieval. Negative. Notes. Refused experimental treatment. Voluntarily induced SCP-340 production. Housed at site... SCP-346. Caucasian male. Age at retrieval. 12. SCP-340 production at retrieval. Negative. Notes. Underwent experimental treatment. Treatment failed. SCP-340 production induced. Deceased. Voluntary self-termination. SCP-347. Caucasian male. Agent retrieval. 13. SCP-340 production at retrieval. Negative. Notes. Underwent experimental treatment. Treatment initially believed successful. Deceased. Suffocation due to unexpected SCP-340 production. Item number, SCP-575, Object Class, Keter, Special Containment Procedures. Any and all instances of SCP-575 are to be immediately isolated and contained with Protocol AL-9077 and transported to secured containment. Should an instance of SCP-575 exceed a safely containable size, Protocol AL-9077-B is to be used to divide and isolate SCP-575 into smaller instances. Containment units are to be made of two airtight rooms, each sealed by airlocks. The outer room, Containment A, is to remain lit at all times, with no less than two backup generators on standby. Light fixtures are to be checked weekly and any blackouts in Containment A will result in immediate lockdown until total illumination is restored. The inner containment unit, Containment B, is to be coated in a layer of pure calcium, both inside and out. Personnel entering Containment B are to be fitted with LED-embedded clothing and equipped with portable floodlights in case of emergency. Interaction with SCP-575 should be limited to sample collection and observation. Any samples obtained from SCP-575 must be treated in the same manner as the original source, and all test areas must have calcium lining and emergency illumination procedures similar to those outlined here. Any and all civilian deaths resulting from SCP-575 are to be attributed to wild animal attacks or scavenger predation of an already deceased subject. Should deeper scrutiny be applied, attacks are to be blamed on a serial killer or satanic cult, and any additional information is sealed due to ongoing investigation. Description SCP-575 appears to be an unknown form of matter, taking the form of a series of amorphous black shapes and structures. 
SCP-575 is difficult to observe, as it immediately dissipates when exposed to light, an action reminiscent of SCP-1219. However, a connection between the two entities has not yet been made. Current testing has been unable to identify if SCP-575 is organic or inorganic. Despite the lack of any visible nervous systems or observable organic components, SCP-575 displays behavior consistent with an active consciousness. SCP-575 initially manifests in total darkness. How this occurs is unknown. However, tests have shown a variable mass of SCP-575 forming when data expunged variable, along with the time frame. SCP-575 is capable of floating and can alter its density, allowing it to pass through very small openings. SCP-575 prefers very dark, isolated locations in which to settle after its initial formation and will remain there until it reaches critical mass at data expunged. SCP-575 grows with the absorption of biological material SCP-575 will attack living things by solidifying portions of itself and using these appendages to bludgeon, cut, and crush subjects. The tracking and selection methods used by SCP-575 are currently not understood. Upon disabling a subject, SCP-575 will forcibly tear and crush tissue within the main mass until it is absorbed. SCP-575 is unable to interact with objects rich in calcium, however, and nesting areas for SCP-575 can be identified by the large amount of bones, teeth, and calcified dust around them. SCP-575 is capable of manifesting in any area of total darkness. This appears to be a form of spontaneous generation and can form in any suitably dark location after data expunged. SCP-575 was initially recovered under the home of Mr. and his family. When initial contact was made, SCP-575 had digested the household and had partially consumed a neighbor, one age. Since this initial contact, instances of SCP-575 have been recovered, most of which have been in residential homes or large buildings, such as factories and schools. The cause for this preference is unknown, however, it has been suggested that the building behaviors of man simply provide more suitable nesting areas, or that SCP-575 somehow needs a nearby human presence. Both theories are under investigation. Item Number SCP-577 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-577 is to be contained within a standard large containment unit, reinforced with steel ballistic shielding. All doors to the containment unit and related areas must be capable of remote operation. Twice a year, D-Class personnel are to be sent into the chamber to inspect the ballistic shielding for any damage caused by SCP-577 and make any needed repairs. They are also responsible for removing any cadavers or detritus left from prior entries into the containment chamber. Any Foundation personnel entering SCP-577's containment must wear full-body ballistic protection. Description SCP-577 is an animated, levitating mass of ammunition of various calibers that persistently spins in a spherical formation. Approximately 40% of the ammunition is 9mm. However, large quantities of 10mm and .45 ACP rounds have also been noted. Bullets within SCP-577 are capable of leaving the mass and firing at speeds comparable to those from a standard handgun. Occasionally, the mass has been observed forming recognizable shapes and likenesses, commonly those of domestic animals. SCP-577's total mass rises consistently, with approximately 1,000 new pieces of ammunition appearing in the mass each year. SCP-577 is exceptionally aggressive towards all Foundation staff and D-Class who have a background in law enforcement. A large amount of its mass will fire towards these staff members, 
resulting in physical injury and occasionally death. However, research has found that SCP-577 acts friendly towards a small number of D-Class, typically those taken from U.S. prison and homeless populations. Addendum 577-A on 01-2019. D-2812-6 was sent into SCP-577's containment chamber for its semi-annual inspection. The inspection and resulting interview have been recorded below. 0 minutes 0 seconds. D-2812-6 enters the containment chamber. SCP-577 approaches D-2812-6 and assumes the shape and size of a large cat. D-2812-6 looks confused. 2 minutes 34 seconds. D-2812-6 begins the inspection and maintenance, but stops periodically to pet SCP-577. 4 minutes 1 second. D-2812-6's progress in washing the walls slows, and he appears to be crying. 5 minutes 53 seconds. D-2812-6 stops working and slumps against the wall. SCP-577 sits next to him and rests its head on his leg. D-2812-6 continues crying and holds SCP-577 closely. 8 minutes 19 seconds. Staff order D-2812-6 to leave the containment chamber. He does not immediately comply and instead continues holding SCP-577. 9 hours 37 minutes. SCP-577 appears to guide D-2812-6's hand into itself. When he pulls his hand out, it is covered in what appears to be blood. 10 minutes 44 seconds. D-2812-6 stares at his hand for several moments before opening it to reveal a bullet that throbs slightly and drips blood. He holds his hand to his chest and whispers something. 15 minutes 52 seconds. After further exhortation from on-duty personnel, D-2812-6 stands up and embraces SCP-577 before exiting the containment chamber. Upon being brought out of the containment chamber, the bullet stopped moving and all other anomalous effects ceased. This allowed security personnel to detain D-2812-6 and confiscate the bullet for analysis and testing. The blood was genetically similar to D-2812-6's, but not identical. Ballistics analysis of the bullet indicates it had impacted flesh or some other soft substance. However, D-2812-6 was not harmed in any way. The bullet was returned to the D-Class prior to the interview. Dr. Vanderbilt First things first, please state your name for the record. D-2812-6 I'm Arturo Rosas. Uh, D-Class 28126. Dr. Vanderbilt Wonderful. He notes something on his pad. Alright, Arturo. I want you to walk me through what happened in there. D-2812-6 It turned itself into my cat. A cat that me and my brother helped as a kid. I'd recognize his tail anywhere. Dr. Vanderbilt. You're positive it was your cat. D-2812-6. Yes. Dr. Vanderbilt. You obviously must really miss it for you to decide to just quit what you were doing. D-2812-6. It's what he said to me. I heard him talk to me. It was quiet. I almost didn't hear it. But he said, I'm sorry. Dr. Vanderbilt, if this was really your cat, what would it have to be sorry about? D-2812-6. It was him. I'm not making this shit up. Dr. Vanderbilt raises a hand. No need to get angry. I concede this was your cat. Please, go on. D-2812-6. Before I was with you guys, just after my mom kicked me and my brother out, a cat found us. He was a stray, but we gave it a little bit of our food and he stuck around. My brother named him Duck because he liked the sign when we were learning sign language together. 
D-2812-6. He pauses. He helped us survive. Kind of trained him to be like a therapy cat, you know. My brother was deaf, and it's hard enough not having a home. Duck helped him a lot. Until... D-2812-6 sighs and wipes his eyes. The last time I saw Duck was... was when he came to find me. I don't know how. But he was always Ricardo's cat first. He led me back to where we were staying. Cops all over the area. D-2812-6. I never got to say goodbye. I was so angry and scared. Duck tried to comfort me, but I threw rocks at him. I didn't mean to. It's just a part of me hated Duck for showing me. He hissed at me and ran away. D-2812-6 coughs. Saw on the news a few days later that an unnamed male had threatened a police officer. The cop was naturally afraid for his life and just shot. We were just two kids trying to survive. Of course, the news doesn't bother to ask questions. Instantly started to list stats about gang violence. Dr. Vanderbilt. That sounds rough. But I'm not really sure how it's relevant. D-2812-6. Because that thing gave me a chance to say goodbye. You've probably forgotten what your family feels like. But this bullet was my brother's heart. I lived beside him for years. I know what his heartbeat feels like from the nights we spent trying to keep warm, or the times he was afraid when a cop drove past, or when it jumped if I woke him. And for those few seconds where this bullet was still beating, I was able to say goodbye. I felt his blood drain onto my hands, and I was able to comfort him. Dr. Vanderbilt. Well, I hope you're doing better now. D-2812-6. I don't know if it was all in my head, but knowing all the weird stuff here, I feel... I know that Ricardo could sense I was there. Even now, ten years later. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now, and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.